This video covers the D3 data operator. The structure of this video is as follows. D3 data operator. D3 data operator with many data values. Mismatches between data points and DOM elements. The summary. All right, let's get started. D3 data operator. First, let's take a look at the D3 data operator. This joins the specified array of data with the current selection. Let's first take a look at how the data operator behaves with one data point. We begin by using a new bare bones HTML file. First, we select the body and then we insert a paragraph element. As you can see, the paragraph element has been inserted into the HTML document. Let's look at the properties of the paragraph element. As you can see, this paragraph element has many properties. Notice that the first property of the paragraph element is the access key. Now, let's attach an array of one number to this paragraph element. First, select the paragraph element, then chain the data command to the selection with an array that contains one data element. You can see all of the paragraph elements properties. Notice that the first property is now something called underscore underscore data underscore underscore. This is where D3 binds the data. In this case, it was the number one. The single element inside of the array we pass to the paragraph selection. Now let's attach an array of three numbers to this paragraph element. Instead of having a single number as the first element of this array, the first element is now itself an array containing three numbers. You can see that the first property of the paragraph element data is array brackets three. Two things to notice. One, we successfully attached an array of three numbers to the paragraph element. Two, the array brackets three is telling us the length of the array. When we click into the array, we can see the three numbers from our array as well as their respective indices. Now let's attach a function to this paragraph element. This time the first element of the array is a JavaScript function. This function named return3 returns the number 3. You can see that the data property is now the function defined in the array passed to the data operator. Notice that the name property contains the name of the function. If the function was an anonymous function, the name property would be an empty string. Lastly, let's attach a JavaScript object to this paragraph element. We haven't yet covered JavaScript object literals or JavaScript associative arrays. For now, trust me that the way Superwoman is defined creates a JavaScript object. You can see that the data property is now the object defined in the array passed to the data operator. You can see each name value pair for the object. In each of these cases, we were binding one piece of data, be it a value, function, array, or object, to one DOM element. D3 data operator with many data values. Let's continue to look at the D3 data operator. Remember that the data operator joins the specified array of data with the current selection. This time, however, instead of binding one piece of data, we are going to bind two pieces of data. Though 2 is a small number, what is learned here can be generalized to any number of data points. Using the bare bones HTML file, we select the body and insert a paragraph element. Then we insert another paragraph element. And as you can see, two paragraph elements have been inserted into the HTML document body. Now, let's look at the properties of the paragraph elements. As you can see, the selection array contains the two paragraph elements that were inserted. 
one way click and to each paragraph, you can see that the first property element is the access key. Also, notice that the select all selection provides the length of the array, which is the number of elements selected. Now, let's attach an array of two numbers to the paragraph elements. First, select all the paragraph elements, then chain the data command to the selection with an array that contains two data elements. This command returns a selection containing the two paragraphs. When you click into each paragraph, you can see that the first property is now the data property. Second, you can see that the zero index paragraph element got the zero index data array point and that the one index paragraph element got the one index data array point. This is generalizable to as many data points as you have. The first selection element gets the first data point, the second element gets the second data point, and so on and so forth. Now let's attach an array of three numbers to each of the paragraph elements. Instead of having single numbers as elements of the array, we now have arrays as elements of the array. The first element is now itself an array containing three numbers. The second element is now itself an array containing three numbers. Notice, we successfully attached an array of three numbers to each of the three paragraph elements. When, when we click into each of the data arrays attached to each paragraph element, we can see the three numbers from our array as well as their respective indices. Now let's attach a function to each of the paragraph elements. Instead of having single numbers as elements of the array, we now have functions as elements of the array. The first element is now itself an anonymous function that when evaluated returns the number three. The second element is now an anonymous function that when evaluated returns the number four. Notice, we successfully attached an anonymous function to each of the paragraph elements. Because we used an anonymous function this time, the name property for each function is an empty string. Lastly, let's attach JavaScript objects to the paragraph elements. Instead of having single numbers as elements of the array, we now have JavaScript objects as elements of the array. You can see that the data property for each paragraph now contains the objects defined in the array passed to the data operator. You can see each name value pair for the object in each paragraph element. In each of these cases, we were binding one piece of data, be it a value, function, array, or object to one DOM element. However, since we had several pieces of data and several DOM elements, the first data point gets bound to the first DOM element in the selection, the second data point gets bound to the second DOM element in the selection, and so on and so forth. Mismatches between data points and DOM elements. So far we have covered how data attaches a data point to the DOM element. Then we covered what happens if we have more than one data point and more than one DOM element. Now we cover what happens if we have a mismatch between data points and DOM elements. That is, what if we only have one data point and many DOM elements? Or the other way around, what if we have more than one data point and only one DOM element? First, let's attach an array of one number to a selection of two paragraph elements. Using the bare bones HTML file, we select the body and insert a paragraph element. Then we insert another paragraph element. And as you can see, two paragraph elements have been inserted into the HTML body. Let's look at the properties of the paragraph elements. As you can see, the selection array contains the two paragraphs that were inserted. When we click into each paragraph, you can see that the first property element is the access key. Also, 
Notice that the select all selection provides the length of the array, which is the number of elements selected. Now, let's attach an array of one number to the selection containing two paragraph elements. First, select all of the paragraph elements, then chain the data command to the selection with an array that contains one data element. This command returned a selection containing the one paragraph element. When we click into the paragraph, you can see that the first property is now the data property, and this data property contains the number one. So you can see that the first data point gets bound to the first element. That said, what happened to the second paragraph? That said, what happened to the second paragraph in the selection? The result of the data operation is the update selection. This selection represents the selected DOM elements that were successfully bound to the specified data elements, which in this case, because there was only one data point and it got bound to the first paragraph, means that the second paragraph is ignored. This is incredibly important and we'll cover this in greater detail in the next video. First, let's take a look at having one DOM element and more than one data point. We select the body and insert a paragraph element. Let's look at the properties of the paragraph element. The first property of the paragraph element is the access key, so we are working with a clean paragraph element. Now, let's attach an array of two numbers to this paragraph element. First, select the paragraph element, then chain the data command to the selection with an array that contains the two data elements. This command returned a selection containing the one paragraph element. When we click into the paragraph, you can see that the first property is now the data property, and this data property contains the number one. So you can see that the first data point gets bound to the first element. That said, what happened to the second data point? Look at the length property of the selection array. This says two, even though we only see one paragraph element. Keep this in the back of your mind. We will come back to explore what happened to the second data point in the next video. In each of these cases, there was a mismatch between the number of DOM elements in the selection and the data points we were passing into the data operator. While the data operator attached the first data point to the first DOM element like we would expect, some strange things happened when there were either extra data points or extra DOM elements. We will cover what happened to these extra data points and extra DOM elements in the next video. The summary. This video covered the D3 data operator, D3 data operator with many data values, mismatches between data points and DOM elements, and the summary.